Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com, and I just got back from a trip to Europe. More about that in the next video, but I was really happy to find a package from Pen Chalet waiting for me when I got home. The package contained two things. This box of Pen Chalet exclusive ink from Dominant Industry called Horseshoe Bend, And in this black box is a pen from the Indian pen company Magna Carta, as you can tell from the logo here. Let me start by showing you the pen. I'll remove this from the outer box, and then I'll remove this sleeve. And now I can open the inner box, and there it is. This is a Magna Carta start, and it's a little bigger than I expected. The green acrylic color is called Jasper, and if you look at it from a distance like this, it gives the impression of being a medium grass green with a bit of variation. When you look a little closer, you can see the bigger shiny pearly white pieces that are in the mix. And when you look even closer, you see that a lot of the pen is actually a brownish olive green, but there are bright turquoise areas between them. Taking a look at the cap, there's no branding on the clip of the pen, but it's a good thick solid one, but it's still springy and functional. Above the clip, there's a shiny chrome ring, again pretty thick, and the finial acrylic matches the body of the pen, and it's smooth and flat on top. At the other end of the pen, Again, we've got a pretty thick, shiny silver ring, and the end cap is made of the same acrylic, and it's also smooth and flat. At the bottom of the cap, there is a nice wide cap band with a tapered bottom edge, and on the front of the cap, centered nicely below the clip, it says Magna Carta. And on the opposite side, we get the Magna Carta logo. The cap twists off in about one and a quarter turns, just a bit more. And underneath, you see that the cap threads are wide and flat, so they're perfectly comfortable to grip. There is a bit of a step up from the grip section to the body, but it's modest enough and the section is long enough that it's not uncomfortable like a Pilot Metropolitan is. The nib itself is a stainless steel fine this time, and unlike a lot of pen companies, Magna Carta makes their own nibs, so I'm excited to try this one out. I do own a couple of Magna Carta nibs already, but they're titanium with folded tipping, so this will be the first standard Magna Carta nib that I've ever used. Turning this over, you can see the feed, and it looks to me like an ebonite feed, which is pretty cool. I wonder if that big F means that this one is specifically made for a fine nib. Well, of course, I'm going to ink this pen up with this Dominant Industry Horseshoe Bend ink that I just got, but let's take a closer look at the ink itself before I do that. And here is another one of those gorgeous bottles. I love the heavy bottoms of these that refract the light like a lens. Of course, the label has the Pen Chalet logo, and the top of the cap has the Dominant Industry D. And man, I love how these bottles feel in my hand. Such a great shape. The other side of the label marks this as an exclusive ink and gives us the volume of 25 milliliters. As usual, I'm going to swatch this ink on a few different papers. I'll start with my color ring, but then I'll swatch it on some pure white rhodia, and some irifol, which is slightly warm toned, and on midori, which is ivory.
As this dries, you can see that this is a greenish teal ink. From the coloring, I get the impression that this will probably provide some nice shading. And there's just a hint of red sheen where it's the heaviest. On the Irifol, we get a cooler, bluer tone, and just a bit of that pale, hazy finish that's common on this type of coated paper. On the Midori, it's no surprise that the tone is a bit warmer, and there's really nice shading and a touch of sheen in the heavy areas. Okay, so now I can fill the pen. If I didn't mention it before, this pen comes with a standard cartridge converter. This one's a Schmidt, so it's an international standard. And I'll just suck up a bit of ink here. All right, let's see how this writes. I should be testing this pen with a more familiar ink first, but I'm pleasantly surprised to see how smooth this nib is for a fine nib. The Rhodia seems to be soaking up this ink as soon as it touches the paper, but there's still a little bit of shading. What I really like about this nib, though, is that it's really nice and springy. I'm not going to push it hard, but I can actually even get a little bit of flex and line variation with it. Really nice. I think this is my new favorite fine nib that I own. I mentioned earlier that this pen is bigger than I expected. For comparison, here it is next to a Lamy All-Star and a Jinhao 100. And it's a little longer and thicker than both of them. So for some bigger pens, here's a Jinhao X159 and here's an Opus 88 Omar. And these pens are both a little bit longer than the Magna Carta, but the Magna Carta is still thicker, I think. Let me measure. So right below the cap, the Magna Carta is about 16 millimeters in diameter, maybe just a hair less. And the Jin Hao is about one millimeter smaller. And the Opus 88 is even smaller than the Jin Hao. And as long as I've got you here, this is another semi-Indian pen. This one is an Epitome Emerald, which is quite a bit shorter and smaller all around. This pen probably deserves its own video, but there's a snag with that, so I'm not sure I'll get to it. We'll see. Anyway, as it happens, I've ended up with two bottles of Dominant Industry Horseshoe Bend ink. And as much as I like it, I don't have any space on my shelves for extra bottles at the moment, so I'm going to give this second bottle away. So if you'd like it, all you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment on this video, and I'll choose a random winner in a couple of weeks. This ink and pen were sent to me to review by Pen Chalet. I didn't pay for them, but I also don't have any restrictions about what I can say about them. Luckily, this pen and ink turned out to be really nice. I don't have enough green pens, and although I'm not usually a big fan of cracked ice acrylics, this pen looks really good, and it feels even better in my hand. Oh, as usual, I forgot to mention earlier that the cap does post. Not very deeply, but it is very secure, and the balance isn't terrible. For my hand, when the cap is posted, it rubs against the edge of my hand, so I wouldn't post it if I were going to be writing for a while, but it's just fine for jotting down some notes and that sort of thing. And that's it! I'll be back soon with a brief video about a couple of European pen shops, so subscribe if you'd like, and take a second to like this video if you did. That's always a big help. I've put some links to these things at Pen Chalet in the description below. Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'll see you next time.